I invite you to stand in body or in spirit. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning, When Morning Gilds the Sky, 853 in your hymnal. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray together our prayer of the day. Eternal God, you draw near to us in Christ. Amid the cares of our lives, make us attentive to your presence, that we may treasure your word above all else, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the word. The first reading comes from the book of Genesis, the 18th chapter, beginning at the first verse. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of the tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed low down to the ground. He said, my Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourself. And after that, you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have in mind. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready quickly these three measures of choice flour, knead it and make it cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, where is your wife, Sarah? And he said, there in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. The word of the Lord. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle. Those who lead a blameless life and do what is right. They do not slander with the tongue. They do no evil to their friends. In their sight, the wicked are rejected, but they honor those who fear the Lord. They do not give their money in hope of gain, nor do they take bribes against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never The second lesson comes from the book of Colossians, the first ver- chapter, beginning at verse 15. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things invisible and visible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him, God was pleased to reconcile to God's self all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith without shifting from hope promised by the gospel 
that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of, his gospel, of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout ages and generations, but now has been revealed to the saints. To them, God chose to make known how great among Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom so that we may present everyone mature in Christ, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Gospel according to Luke, the 10th chapter. Now, as Jesus and hand his disciples went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Do we have any children here this morning? Well, I guess nobody gets to watch me juggle then. <laughs> Another time, perhaps. <laughs> Maybe after the service at coffee hour. How about that? <laughs> Thank you for sitting down when I did not uh, ask you to do so. When I was in middle school, I attended an overnight event at my home congregation in St. Paul, Minnesota. Part of that event included a time to play games in the dark with the lights off. Now, in this church, there's a long hallway underneath the offices, and at one end of it, underneath the stairs, but also still in the middle of the hallway, there's a metal pole. Yep, some of you might see where this story is going. So we were playing some game, and it doesn't even matter which one, and I didn't remember even if I could. But uh, with everything happening in the game and with my desire to win, I managed to run headfirst into that pole. Ever since then, that pole has been wrapped in bright orange duct tape to keep other children from doing the same thing. But in my attempt to win, the distraction carried a very painful consequence. In today's gospel reading, we hear about Jesus being welcomed into the home of Martha, where she and her sister Mary live. 
as this is Martha's house, she immediately takes action to make Jesus' stay as hospitable as possible. Well, we are not told by the author of this gospel what exactly those tasks are, we do know that hospitality, hospitality excuse me, was an incredibly important part of being an honorable person in society. Often, this work fell primarily to women and to enslaved people. Our Genesis reading this morning is another example of that. Martha is doing what she has been taught to do her entire life, to care for other people, putting their needs ahead of her own. Mary, on the other hand, does the opposite. Abandoning the caretaking tasks of hospitality that society insisted only women or enslaved people did, she instead sits at Jesus's feet and listens to him. She assumes the role of a student, a role traditionally reserved for men. Martha, in all her work to be hospitable, becomes distracted and overwhelmed by everything that she sees needs to be done. In the honor shame culture of Judea, her not living into society's expectations of her as a hostess, especially to someone held in such high esteem as Rabbi Jesus is particularly damaging. And at the time when women who own and run their own households are exceedingly rare, there is extra pressure on Martha to measure up. Carrying the weight of these expectations and her own desire to serve Jesus well, she becomes upset at the lack of help from Mary and asks Jesus to help put her sister back into society's place for women. But how does Jesus show up in this moment? First off, even before we hear about Martha's worry and distraction, Jesus wel welcomes Mary to learn at his feet. Jesus erases the line between who society says should or should not be learning from religious leaders and welcomes Mary as one of his beloved followers. There is nothing that Mary does or does not possess that makes her unworthy of being in the loving presence of Christ. Welcomed in, Jesus says this will not be taken from her. And with Martha, Jesus shows up in a similarly loving way. He acknowledges her worry and distraction, knowing all the pressure that society places on her to be the perfect hostess and caregiver. He redirects her gently reminding her that being an authentic relationship with her family and community is what's important. And there is also an unspoken invitation. With Mary having been welcomed in to learn at Jesus's feet, the same welcome is also extended to Martha too. There is nothing Martha needs to do to earn a place at Jesus's feet. Her worthiness and belovedness do not depend on what she has done to welcome Jesus into her home. Our society and world, while not exactly living into the same honor shame dynamic that Judea did at the time of Jesus, adds its own pressures into our lives. Our value is not seen as coming from our inherent belovedness at human beings, but instead is centered on what we do. If we're unable to do what we used to do, or what we do is not seen as valuable or important, therefore, neither are we. In our own fear at not being good enough, we insist that people fit into clearly defined roles and expectations, limiting both ourselves and others in the process. This fear leads to shame and to sorrow. And as we are pulled in a million different directions to try to prove to ourselves and to others that we are worthy to be loved, our relationships with our community and loved ones suffer. There are painful consequences when we try to complete an impossible task. 
And we carry this into our relationship with God, losing the sense of what matters and trying to prove that we indeed are worthy of God's love. We don't feel comfortable with God seeing the metaphorical dirty dishes in the sink, the dirt swept under the carpet, or the black hole of a storage space the back closet has become. We don't want God to know or see the ways that we've hurt loved ones or those entrusted to us, the angry words spoken without a thought, or the times we've ignored someone who needed our help. And, and, and. It feels easier, maybe safer even, to pretend those things don't exist and that everything is just fine. But it's into these messy, distraction-filled, shame-causing parts of our lives that Jesus shows up. Just as he entered Martha's home and reminded her that her belovedness is not centered on what she did, he does the same for us. We do not have to do anything to earn God's love or to be invited into God's presence. Our worth is not determined by what we do or what we don't do. How we show up exactly as we are is enough. Being in relationship with our community members is enough. As it is in those relationships that authentic loving service is shared among people rather than expectations overwhelming a certain few. The same invitation that Jesus extended to Mary and Martha is extended to us too. Extended as wide as Jesus' arms on the cross, putting to death the shame and fear that tries to tell us we are not worthy of God's love. Along with Jesus at the empty tomb, we are raised to new life, secure in the knowledge that we are beloved children of God. And this eternal belongingness cannot be taken away from us. So beloveds, hear this. You, as you are, are enough. You, as you are, are beloved. There is nothing you have to do to earn God's love. It is already yours. There is nothing that you have done or will do that makes you unworthy of being in the presence of Christ, of learning at his feet. And when the demands of this life are overwhelming, God is at work holding you in love and comfort offering rest from the weight of this world's endless and impossible expectations. You are fully known and fully loved, and that cannot be taken away from you. Amen. We join in the hymn of the day, hymn number 781, Children of the Heavenly Father.
I invite you to stand in body or spirit as we share in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, creation, and all those in need. Ever present God, in Christ you fill all things. As your church gathers to hear your word, share your meal, and receive your blessing, Teach us to welcome people as we have been welcomed by you. God of grace, hear our prayer. Through Christ, you created all things, visible and invisible. Teach humankind to honor and protect all creation, including living things that can remain hidden from our eyes, such as fungi, amoebas, insects, and arachnids. God of grace, hear our prayer. Through Christ, you reconcile all things. Motivate everyone, especially those in power, to end enslavement, dehumanization, and brutality of any kind, and to protect and honor the lives of indigenous peoples, especially those who are descended from the indigenous people on whose ancestral land we currently reside. God of grace. Through Christ, you bring peace. Assure all who are worried and distracted by many things of your constant presence and love. Comfort those suffering in mind, body, or spirit, especially Christine, Leslin, Eleanor, Judy, Ray, Jamie, Jeff, Colleen, Dick, Julie, and all those we name in our hearts. Sustain those who serve as caregivers and all who are feeling crushed under the weight of impossible expectations. God of grace. In Christ, you make your word fully known. Inspire us to abide fully in your word as we sit at the feet of Jesus. Bless the ministry of VBS leaders and helpers, teachers, and education professionals. God of grace. In Christ, you brought forth the firstborn from the dead. We give thanks for the saints you have gathered at your endless table and their faithful witness to your grace. Gather us with them in your eternal glory. God of grace. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. I invite you to share COVID safe signs of peace with each other.
Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his gl glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and blessed it and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. In Christ's presence, there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet. You may be seated.
All are welcome at this table. All are welcome to partake in this meal. Those of you joining us online, you're welcome to take whatever bread and wine or grape juice you have on hand. And those of you here, you picked up your cup on the way in. I invite you to take the side with bread, open it. This is the body of Christ given for you. You turn it over to the side with wine and grape juice. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand in body or spirit. Receive God's blessing. May the God who surrounds us, the God who walks with us, the God who blows through us and unites us, go out with us, giving us light and life, courage and peace. I invite you to sing our sending hymn, hymn number 537, On Our Way Rejoicing. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. <laughs>